What we've done is we've totally abandoned the old way that we were doing things before and, and started again. And we've got rid of all of our advisory committees and replacing them with new working groups that have um, there's, there's a greater diversity of them, so there's more community input, but they have really they have a defined timeline and a defined way of giving input to the council around the kind of strategies and projects that we're going to be working on. So we're proposing um, doing one that's going to look at youth, it's going to look at um, climate change and sustainability and, and sustainable transport, and a whole array of these that will actually help the community to engage really clearly in what council sees as, as its priorities. Hi, yeah, my name's Rachel, for those who don't know, and I am from the Green Lantern Network. Thank you all for coming along this evening. First of all, I would like to acknowledge that we meet here on our land and pay respect to traditional owners past and present. Next up is Councillor Sam Wainwright, an adaptation working group. Well, I think the committee has worked really well because we actually come to have a, you know, diverse backgrounds and some diverse points of view on some of the big debates about how to get to the heart of, of climate change. So differences, some points of view, for instance, on is an emission trading scheme the most effective way to rapidly draw down carbon emissions? I'm in the camp says no, <laughs> but uh, our time and sustainability officer believes that it is. But the interesting thing is that because we're not a level of government that can implement emissions trading schemes or introduce carbon taxes or decide the rates of carbon taxes and all the rest anyway, in a certain sense we've been able to sidestep those debates and focus on I sort of hesitate to use the term, but to, to, to focus on direct action. Probably, you know, one of the most interesting ideas, which has come in very late at the stage, um, but is, 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 is a real mind blower, is, is, is the idea that the city would also be better off financially by taking money that it has currently in, that it's currently invested in investment portfolios uh, and, and putting that instead into its own renewable technology. Um, because the sums we've done to date indicate that we would get a better return. But that is a fascinating idea, that money that we currently have tied up in investment properties or in shares could actually be, one, more to giving us a greater return um, by investing that in our own, you know, medium-scale electricity generation, more PV cells, uh, more geothermal, more, more, more everything, as well as being a fantastic outcome in terms of reducing carbon emissions. And, 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 and being a fantastic example for the state, I mean, to be quite frank, the state government is dragging the chain. And the free man can say, look, in our little small way, look what we've managed to achieve. Can't the state government do it? I think it can. So that's, now I'd, I'd like to take credit for that um, uh, clean energy, um, that, that, that low energy um, light bulb moment, but it was actually, it was actually the mayor's, um, and uh, I think that's a very interesting one. Uh, somebody I've been working with quite a bit over the last few months, and she is the um, chair of the South Terrace Improvements Project Working Group here in Sicily. Definitely a diverse group, and it's been really quite interesting. So I just want to share a couple of things with you, and I'm going to read them because I want to get them right. Um, we did look into the, the council strategic plan. We thought that was important, but so that we don't turn up with a shopping list of about a thousand things, we um, split our focus into three areas. Um, urban design and streetscape, um, traffic and pedestrian movements, and then I'm more into kind of the activation, placemaking side of things. So as we're putting our strategies together, we're noticing overlap, and certainly tonight I've heard overlap and synergies. I think that's going to be the most critical thing. Probably our biggest challenge has been that we're dealing with a specific location in a very long street. And one of the things we did early on, which didn't cost $30,000, was David Enwich came along, and I know a lot of people went to his workshop, and he's an expert in shared space. So one of our really key premises has been, how do we get a better balance between pedestrians and moving vehicles, whether they be bikes or buses or, or cars? And that's been a real, you know, a real focus, and which is why we've got the great opportunity to experiment through the Cappuccino Street, Street Club. Um, the other thing we did is we actually consulted early, because we, we were conscious and I guess I pushed this given this is the business I'm in, um, that we wanted to talk to people generally. So we had an opportunity during the Fremantle Festival to do a wishing booth. Some of you might have come to that. And I'm just going to share the top 12 because these are the things that are now framing some of our ideas. So number one, and this is like, we have about 321 wishes, so it's not scientifically sound, but it gave us a feel, um, was less or no cars was number one. Uh, more pedestrian and bike orientation creating shared space. 
so people definitely said that. Number two were more trees, greenery, grass, flowers, anything that was going to provide a softer palette. And if it could provide shade, that would be great. And in there, some people were conscious of bringing in a water element to give an out closeness to the water, whether that be through public art or through physical water, I don't know. Uh, number three was more public and community art, colour, music, cultural activities. You'd think we've got enough of those at all our festivals, but people were really interested in, and I guess that's where Cappuccino Street Club comes in. You know, how do we use some of those public spaces? I think the first person that spoke economic development, the master plan around public space, is going to help some of that, and some of the things that are already happening in the square, etc., where we're just trying to provide some non-commercial opportunities for people to get together, I think is good. Number four was encourage and grow local, homegrown, unique business which is family oriented and broadens the offering. Small bars were in there. Um, ideas like art material shops to support all the creators in town and um, some business incubators that reduced rent and along the way, um, Renew Fremantle happened on Point Street, which is great. So I don't know if there's any opportunity on South Terrace. Number five, create adventure, discovery, surprise, things like movable furniture. You can see a bit of an influence here from David Enwicked. Uh, number six was remove buses and replace with tram or light rail where some people have a more longer term vision. Number seven, I'm happy to share this later, is expand the market beyond current opening times and to the street evenings and other days. And John Murdoch has been on this working group, so he's heard these things. Uh, number eight was toys and things for children to play with along the strip, family entertainment. And I think one of the biggest successes of Cappuccino Strip Street Club, if you've been along, is the number of really tiny tops playing hopscotch and being able to come into the centre and feel safe and, and dress ups and all the stuff. Lots of adults dressing up too, of course. Mm -hmm. And then number nine, we're almost there, broaden the offerings, less cafes, mix the business and offerings up to cater for all. Uh, number ten, more security for pubs, less drunk and aggressive behaviour, so we're our safety mob looking at that. Number eleven, which I think is a really easy thing to do, maybe, clean pavements, bins and rubbish more regularly and encourage merchants to clean their front. Basis. We probably haven't spent enough time looking at how you encourage business to champion, but we've certainly talked to business every time we've run those um, little experiments. And um, 10 people said, leave it as it is. And I, I think really importantly, the premise we've come from is, it's a fantastic place, it's an appreciative approach, how do we keep it fantastic and improve it? And I guess my personal view is, it's not the only cappuccino strip in town now, we've got Oxford Street, we've got Beaufort Street, what else have we got to offer? And I'm particularly, and I'll put my values on the table, really interested in what's the story of South Terrace, how does it link to our past, and how does it link to our aspirations for the future? And things like the wayfinding, the public art, can allow that story to be told. So it doesn't look like any main street in town. I and mean, we've got beautiful heritage buildings, but I think we could add that bit more to the story. So that's kind of where we're at. And I don't actually think next meeting will be our, own, our, our final meeting, Brad, now that I've heard all this. I don't think we're quite there yet, so we'll kind of see what the group decides to do. And you did mention that you've already done community consultation. Is there they were the 12, top? yeah. They were the 12 top yeah, ones yeah, that came right. out. Oh, and, and so I guess this, uh, well, I, well, I'll talk about, uh, you know, we're happy for it to go to public comment. I'm hoping there's something substantial there. I and mean, it's a bit different because we're talking specific. We did get 28,000 for more trees, so look out for more trees. And there's some discussions going on with the landscape architect around that and I believe it's been approved, I'm hoping I'm not talking out of school, um, for some zebra crossings to go in and 30 kilometre zone as a short term solution to safety because we're really concerned about those buses hacking around the corner and pedestrian safety. Perhaps can I ask a teacher question to know the answer? Um, <laughs> I mean those short terms around zebra crossings and things, what was the look in the long term? What, how do you see that kind of playing out? Well, that's the bit we're still having conversations about, but I guess I, I you know, there's a number of options that people are thinking about. Um, I don't think we're leading at all towards no cars. There's certainly some conversation about one way, rerouting buses, uh, potentially changing the actual shape. I mean, in terms of best practice, probably a less straight street is going to slow people down. Um, road treatments around dropping curbs and getting things at level, so those sorts of longer term things. Um, I will definitely support Mary's comment for the dress ups. The dress ups are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I think what's been amazing is we've been working together on this is we've only spent a couple of hundred dollars. 
dollars so far for the bus the first uh, for a truck the first time then someone donated the truck yeah. the rest has been done on zero budget and kindly the council has done some red tape reduction and allowed the streets to be closed but it's about providing a blank canvas and i have to say we were conscious about inviting locals back in understanding that there are visitors and tourists that come anyway and it was about sort of trying to get people feeling like it was their community again which is why we picked the Thursday night. And I think that's been great. Yeah. So, yeah, come down and use your space. Say goodbye to a really long, hot, enjoyable summer. I know it's been one of the best in my life. <laughs>